Manager Xiao said that Xiaoxiu not only secretly took photos of Qian Ji having dinner with President Fan but also posted them in the company group. Isn't she just asking for trouble? He can't help her at all with this. Xiaoxiu was so furious that she gritted her teeth and secretly spray painted Qian Ji's car. When Qian Ji saw his car after work, she was stunned beyond belief. Qian Ji took her car to the force shop for repairs and it so happened that President Fan was also there for a car service. Guessing that Xiaoxiu was behind the incident, President Fan advised Qian Ji not to take it to heart. President Fan, having heard the rumors about the two of them spreading wildly at the company, once again proposed marriage to Qian Ji. However, Qian Ji didn't care about the gossip at all. President Fan tried to persuade her to marry while she was still young, warning her that once she aged, she would lose her value, even using cars as a metaphor to mock her. In response, Qian Ji immediately ordered a top-spec car of the same brand as President Fan's and made it clear that men are just like cars once they've been used for too long and lose their value, they can be replaced at any time. President Fan was left speechless in anger. Sophie came home from work and was pleasantly surprised. It turned out today was her 30th birthday, and Wu Yu, Qian Ji and Lu Man had all gathered to celebrate with her. Sophie removed the zero from the number 30 on the cake and said, Who says I'm 30? I'm only three years old. The four of them took photos together and watched a sweet, cheesy idol drama. Wu Yu casually mentioned an industry conference, Sophie thought to attend the conference, might even meet a good man there. Lu Man chimed in, asking, Why when the four of us get together, we always end up talking about men? Sophie replied, I'm a relationship blogger how can you expect me not to talk about men? Tomorrow, I'll even find a quality guy for Wu Yu. Wu Yu came home drunk, and she happened to share the elevator with Hezia. Seeing her in such a drunken state, Hezia remarked that if she couldn't handle alcohol, she shouldn't drink. Emboldened by the alcohol, Wu Yu cornered Hezia against the wall of the elevator, leaving him struggling to break free. Just then, the elevator door suddenly opened, and Wu Yu's parents were standing there, witnessing the two pressed closely together. Flustered, Hezia quickly handed her over to her parents. Wu Yu's parents were convinced that she and Hezia were dating and began bombarding her with questions. Wu Yu repeatedly explained that they weren't in that kind of relationship, even calling Hezia a jerk before dozing off. Meanwhile, her parents got into a heated argument over whether Hezia was suitable as a potential son-in-law. Lu Man returned home to find Lin Qing in her house once again. She asked him, Why are you at my place again? Are you working for Hungrui or working for me? He responded with a question, Is there a difference? Lu Man said, You flatterer. Unbothered, Lin Qing simply replied, Good night, Miss Lu. The next day at work, Hezia, acting as a customer, reached out to the customer service team on the WI platform and found that they had only a superficial understanding of the products. Frustrated, Hezia decided to build his own customer service team to better and more effectively serve clients. Liang Kui questioned him, saying, WI already has a dedicated customer service department, why create a new one? Hezia explained, there are too many products on the platform. Even professional customer service agents can't be fully knowledgeable about each one. Sophie arrived on time to meet Mr. X as agreed, but to her surprise, his wife showed up instead. Without a word, the woman slapped Sophie and angrily accused her of scamming her husband out of money. The woman became violent, but Sophie didn't back down. A few punches later, she managed to subdue the woman. Crying, the wife revealed that ever since her husband became obsessed with Sophie's live streams, he had not only spent all their family's money on donations but also started physically abusing her and their children. With their son's school term starting soon, they couldn't even afford the tuition. Sophie asked for the woman's account details and transferred her 200,000 yuan, the full amount her husband had spent on her. Lu Man went to play golf with her father and uncle Huang, taking the opportunity, Uncle Huang brought up the idea of a marriage between Lu Man and his son, Huang Jianan, mentioning they were childhood sweethearts. Lu Man replied that she wasn't looking to date anyone yet and playfully linked arms with Lin Qing as they laughed and went to buy water. 
Lin Qing knew Lu Man was using him as a shield, and she teased him about being ambitious. Lin Qing boldly declared that he would win Lu Man over to prove that he deserved the title of ambitious guy. Hezia convened a board meeting to propose the establishment of a professional pre-sales and after-sales customer service team to ensure a seamless connection between customers and products. However, the shareholders argued that the current collaboration with WEI was going exceptionally well and disagreed with spending money to create a new customer service department. Hezia made it clear that he was not there to discuss the matter but to inform everyone of his decision. Wu Yu brought Sophie to the industry conference hosted by their company, and they began evaluating the men attending one by one. Meanwhile, Liang Zong dragged Hezia to join the event, but Hezia was resistant. Liang Zong pleaded with him to stay. As the conference officially started, manager Xiao aimed to embarrass Wu Yu by claiming he was unwell and recommending her to speak on stage. Caught off guard since she hadn't prepared anything, Wu Yu felt flustered. However, Sophie encouraged her to speak boldly, advising her to express her true feelings. Wu Yu took a deep breath and managed to calm herself. She spoke eloquently about the importance and necessity of a pre-sales and after-sales customer service team, which aligned perfectly with Hezia's views. Her impressive speech earned her unanimous praise from the attendees. Sophie praised Wu Yu, saying, your speech was amazing. I almost want to give you a medal. Spotting a man she liked, Sophie encouraged Wu Yu to go after him, but Wu Yu wasn't interested. Instead, Sophie took the initiative to approach the man. He introduced himself as Yang Zijiang, an application engineer, and mentioned that he was a fan of Sophie's. He also had some relationship issues he wanted to discuss, so Sophie took him to the rooftop. Yang Zijiang confessed that he had a crush on a woman but didn't know how to express his feelings. Sophie empathized, sharing that she had faced similar dilemmas in the past and was more than willing to help him navigate his situation. Wu Yu overheard two girls discussing how handsome Hezia was, while Hezia heard two men complimenting Wu Yu and vying to confess their feelings to her. In a rush, Hezia dashed over and grabbed Wu Yu's hand. The two girls ran toward Hezia, and the four of them collided causing the drinks in the girl's hands to spill all over Wu Yu's dress. Fuming, Wu Yu shouted, Hezia, if you make a woman shield you from drinks, what kind of man are you? Sophie told Yang Zijiang, the essence of a crush is actually rooted in insecurity, I've experienced it myself. In the restroom, Wu Yu was wiping the wine off her clothes, angrily blaming Hezia for the trouble he caused her. Meanwhile, Hezia waited outside, trying to explain what had just happened. Wu Yu didn't want to listen, firmly believing he was just a jerk. Drawing on her skills from practicing Sanda since childhood, she attempted to attack Hezia, but he easily subdued her instead.